Hi everybody, my name is Joey Fight. I'm the founder of thephysicaleducator.com and a physical education teacher here in Montreal, Canada. Welcome back to the Phys Ed Show vlog. In today's episode, I'm gonna be breaking down how I created, assigned, and maintained physical activity journals for my grade six students during the wild time that we had back in the spring when we were all engaged in distance learning. Here are your learning targets for today's video. One. I can create an editable Google Slides assignment template. Two, I can assign a Google Slides based physical activity journal to my students in Google Classroom. Three, I can monitor my students' work and provide ongoing feedback through both Google Classroom and Google Drive. So like pretty much every other educator around the world, back in the spring, we were thrown into this distance learning reality. My family and I had just come back from spring break, Life was rocking and rolling, we thought everything was great. Next thing we know, we're all being put into quarantine, the entire province goes into lockdown, school shut down, and we have two days to figure out how to teach online, which was just insanely stressful. It was pretty wild, it was really scary, um, and it was very diminishing in a way because it just, you go from this place of feeling like you're rocking and rolling in your teaching, you're feeling really good about where you're at as an educator, next thing you know, you have no idea what you're doing, you don't know how to go about it, there's no playbook, and you just gotta figure it out. But that's life. So I had a couple things going for me that did make my experience in the spring a little bit easier. First of all, my entire grade six class was already on Google Classroom. They were using it religiously in their homeroom with their homeroom teachers, and we'd even start dabbling with it in physical education class. The second thing I had going for me is that back in like January, we had started our Smart Goals Fitness Unit. And if you've never heard about that unit before, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can learn more about it. I break the whole thing down for you. But the TLDR of it is that basically the students go in, they do fitness testing, they analyze their fitness results, and then based off that analysis, they have to create and design their own SMART goal for their fitness level. Something that's gonna help them improve a self-identified opportunity for growth that they found through their fitness testing. Now, as part of this unit, I created a daily exercise log, something that the students would be able to fill out for over the course of two weeks, to try and see if they were getting the right kind of physical activity in based off the fit, the fit principle so that they were able to meet their SMART goal. Now, when it came to distance learning, I could have just assigned this activity to the students. It would have been really easy to do that. But the thing is that I would have assigned it, I would have heard nothing for two weeks, and then all of a sudden they would have all started turning it in and I would have had this onslaught of information, which would have been great. I would have had a lot of evidence to be able to assess them and try and see where they're at and give them some feedback. But here's where I was really hurting in the spring. Where I was really hurting was the fact that the relationships that I built with my students, the, the jokes, the, the time spent together, the, all those moments that we share as our little classroom community, all of that was missing in the spring. I wasn't be able to hang out with them in phys ed class. I wasn't able to go sit down with them at, during lunch in the cafeteria. I wasn't able to play soccer with them at recess. I was missing on all of that. So for me to just give them this assignment, say, hey, get back to me in two weeks, it just felt like a missed opportunity because I wasn't gonna be able to go in and continue to maintain those relationships and even build new relationships with them and just get an idea of how they were being active at home and encourage them to continue to be active. I was really, really, really concerned about the fact that all of a sudden their world got turned upside down and they're sitting in front of a computer doing hours and hours of distance learning every day. So I decided to redesign my physical activity journal. And the new template I created worked a little bit like this. So first of all, in the top corner there, you'll see there's a space for their SMART goal. And this is, I wanted the students to write their SMART goal on the template itself because I wanted them to always keep it front and center in mind as they were planning their physical activity for the week. Now, like I said before, we had already done this work back in January and I had their SMART goal sheets all scanned and sorted and organized into the digital portfolios. I'll leave a link to my blog post on digital portfolios in the description below. Um, but I wanted them to have it there so that they knew that, okay, this is what I'm working towards. And then the idea here was I wanted them to try and maintain a points streak. So I wanted them to try and keep a streak going of them being active each and every day. And to do this, I broke physical activity down into three main categories. So the first category is they could earn a point for engaging what I call daily moves. Daily moves was just regular everyday kind of physical activity like going for a walk with your family or playing at the park or you know like riding your bike around the block whatever it may be the second category was your fit moves points 
And this was for engaging in planned physical activity that was aligned to your SMART goal. Activity that was gonna help you continue to make progress in that self-identified area and eventually reach the goal that you set for yourself. The third category where your adventure moves points. And this was for wild, crazy, out of the ordinary kind of activities. For a lot of my students, they actually were able to get out of the, the city uh, and they were going out and doing things with their family because they had all this extra family time now because they're always together. Uh, so some of my students went fishing for the first time, some of them went kayaking, whatever it may be, all this kind of fell into that adventure moves category. And if you're looking at the template, what you're gonna see is that the space for entering your, your physical activity is really small. And I did that on purpose. I didn't want them to feel like they had to write down a ton of information every day on how they're active, because I knew that they were, first of all, they were already overwhelmed with all the work that they had to do. And second of all, if I made it really complicated, they wouldn't do it. I wanted my students to be engaged in this. I wanted them to have fun filling it in. So I want to make it really simple for them. I'll show you later on how through the ongoing feedback that I was giving them, I was able to kind of dive deeper into what kind of activity you're doing, why they were doing it, and how they thought about it. Now there was a second part to the physical activity journal, and I called this the brag board. And what the brag board was, was an opportunity for students to celebrate movement. See, uh, at my school I have this awesome physical literacy mural that we've built and maintained over a couple years. And the idea there is that families can send me photos of themselves being active as a family or students just being active individually. And we post it up on the mural so that everybody can see that when it comes to physical literacy, there's no wrong way of doing it. There are so many different options for us to be out active and healthy every day. So the brag board was an opportunity for students to be able to go in and share photos and pictures and selfies of them being active. It was a window into these kids' lives that would just let me see that they're having fun and enjoying themselves as they're going out and moving. Now, I put all this together uh, as a PDF template and then I had to put it into Google Drive um, so that I could use it as an assignment in Google Classroom. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this. I'm gonna walk you through it step by step, but just so you know, just in case, I already did all this work for you. Um, I already made the, the, the template and I'm making it available to you on the website. I'm charging five bucks for it, and here's the thing. I'm charging five bucks because I'm hoping that the five dollars is going to save you a ton of time and energy, and five dollars buys me a coffee. And I don't know about you, but these days, I'm requiring a lot of coffee to just get through my day every day. So I feel like this is a good win-win situation. Anyways, I'll leave a link in the description below to that product in the shop, um, but I still wanna walk you through it so you can kind of see how I create templates in Google Drive. So let's jump into Google Drive right now and I'll show you how I get this done. Okay, so we're here on my Mac and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the PDF versions of the Physical Activity Journal as well as the brag board and convert them into PNGs. And the reason I'm doing this is because later on when I set the activity template up in Google Slides, I wanna be able to use these templates that I've created as background images for those slides. And the reason I do that is so that you know, I could just drop the image into the slide, but then there's always the risk of the student accidentally deleting it or moving it, and then everything getting out of whack. So it's just a bit more of a secure way to do this. So to convert a PDF to a PNG here on a Mac, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the PDF, and it's gonna open in the default app, which is Preview. And then once I have it in Preview, I'm just gonna go File, Export, and then select PNG. I'm gonna use a PNG here for the background. I might just name it PNG so I don't get confused with the PDF later. And then I'll click save. And that's saved now to my um, desktop, which you can see here. And then I'll repeat the exact same process um, with the brag board. So again, this is just gonna make it really easy later on uh, when I'm trying to make my Google Slides template. So I have them both saved now as PNGs on my desktop. So the next thing I have to do is to hop over to Google Drive and once I'm in Google Drive, I'm gonna hit New, Google Slides, and I'm gonna start building my Physical Activity Journal template in Google Slides. So just so you know, I'm doing this a little bit different than I normally would. Normally, I would just create this straight from the assignment page in Google Classroom, but right now, I'm showing you how to do this from Google uh, Drive first, so that you can go and select it later on, uh, just in case you're going to go and get this copy of, of this document for yourself um, 
so that you'll know how to do it once you see it in your drive. So I'm just gonna close the templates here, I don't need this. I'm gonna select these uh, text boxes and just delete them because I don't want them. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go background, choose image, and then browse. And then from my desktop, I'm gonna select the physical activity journal PNG. So I'm gonna select that. And then once it's uploaded, I'll hit done. And you can see now this is the actual background of my slide. Um, so I can click anywhere and nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna move, it can't get accidentally deleted. It's just there as a background. So now my next step is to put text boxes over it so that it can be editable for my students. So to do that, I'm just gonna hit text box and then I'm gonna select the spot here for the smart goal and I'm gonna change the font size. I'll make it really small, put it down to eight because um, that's fine for this area here. So now when the students come in here, they can go in and they can type in what their SMART goal would be um, right, right in the box. Now the next part's a little tricky because what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna wanna put text boxes over each of these grayed out spaces, which is where students are gonna um, be able to input whether they earn daily moves, fit moves, or adventure moves points, as well as the date at the top here. Um, and I say this is a little tricky just because it's a lot of text boxes. There's a lot of work to be done here, but I'm gonna show you a pro tip that's gonna make it way faster, way easier. People, if you are not using keyboard shortcuts, you really need to learn how to use them. They save you so much time. So let me show you what I mean. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste this text box right, right here, and I'm gonna drag it over, and I'm gonna put some filler text in it just to make sure that's aligned properly. So you can see right now it's not aligned right. So I'm gonna drag it up so that it fits in there nice and, and neat, and I'll probably just wanna center that so it looks a little prettier. I'm kind of obsessed with how things look. Um, and then I'll, let's just say, I'll just put a little date here, see if it works. Okay, works fine. I might actually make that a little bit smaller. So I got my date, okay, it's lined up good. And then what I'll, I can do is, um, I'm gonna hit copy paste one more time, and I'm just gonna type an example again, so I have some filler text so I can make sure that it lines up well. I'm going to uh, adjust here so it goes over to the left like that. And then I'm gonna make sure that's lined up. So it's lined up actually pretty good, but I don't want it touching the upper box too much. Um, so I'm just gonna wiggle it around here a little bit until I got it just right. And then, instead of hitting copy paste every time, I'm gonna hold down the option key and just drag it out. So what happens when you hold down the option key on a Mac and you drag out the, the box, it creates a duplicate. So you're not hitting copy paste every time, all right? So now I've got these three um, text boxes here lined up, which is where the students would put in their, uh, their, their points, where the, the activities that they did. I'm actually gonna delete the text there because I don't need it anymore and I don't want them just seeing example everywhere. Um, and then I'll just put in date here so they know to punch in the date. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select, I'm gonna drag and select all of these. And from that, I'm just going to hold down the option key again and come place it here, making sure that the date is lined up. And look at this, now I can select these two boxes. Oh, I selected the smart goals box. And again, holding down option and just dragging out. Google will automatically make sure that it's lined up and then I have one whole column done and then I'm gonna move it over to the next column and then I'm just gonna select these two first columns and hold down option so that I'm not just clicking, copying and paste until the C and V keys on my keyboard are about to explode. Um, I'm just holding down that option key and doing this way faster because we all know that all of this distance learning stuff just takes up so much freaking time that we don't have time to be hitting copy and paste a trillion times in a day. Um, so learning that option key is a good, a good little trick. So I've got uh, all the text boxes are good here. So if the kids were to put in uh, um, any information, you know it will appear right there in the box. So they're good to go. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit the plus button to add a new side. I'll get rid of these text boxes again. And this side will be for my brag board. So again, I'm gonna hit background, choose image, browse, and then I'm gonna look for the uh, Bragbor PNG, which is here, and I'm gonna upload that. Just so you know, a JPEG image would work good uh, just as well. You just can't use a PDF as a background image. And now I've got the Bragboard here. So there's two slides. Um, I'd put buttons down here, and I'll show you how to do this, just because when I initially set this up with my distance learners uh, in the spring, I wasn't sure if it was gonna be a two week, a month long, a two month long, or like a 12 year long activity. So I gave myself the option of adding boxes so that they can navigate down here. It's not really necessary, but if ever you want to know how you can create like a clickable box, 
you actually don't do it with um, just by like doing anything here. What you want to do is you want to create an image. Uh, sorry, an image. And you're going to create a shape. I'm going to make the shape the size of the box. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it uh, transparent. I'm going to make sure that the border is transparent. And with it, a shape, what you can do is you right click. You can make that into a link. And instead of going into a link to like a URL, although I could do that, I'm going to go um, uh, slides in this presentation. So this one here will just go uh, next slide and then apply. And then what happens is if they click it, it goes here. So if they were in presentation mode, let me just jump to that. Um, and they're here. If I just click, it would just jump right over. So just a way of making uh, clickable links in your uh, documents. So I'm going to repeat this, except I'm going to edit it. And then instead of going uh, uh, next slide, I'm going to go previous slide and apply. Um, I just wanted to show you how you can make clickable links here. So my, my physical activity journal, my brag board are all set up. The next thing I'm going to do is just give this baby a title. So I'll call it physical activity journal. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to just add template to it. Now, again, if I was doing this in Google Classroom, Google would actually name it template for me. Um, and you'll see later on when we're in classroom and assigning it, it will actually create uh, a copy for each student and give the student's name in it. But we'll get into that in the next part of this video. Okay, so with the template made, I'm ready to now go assign this in Google Classroom as a classroom assignment. But before we do that, I just wanna remind you that now would be a great time for you to hit that subscribe button down below or go subscribe to my podcast over on Anchor. I'm gonna to continue to be making different kinds of content just like this to try and give you some fresh ideas for your teaching. And I don't want you to miss out on any future content that I put together for you. So take a couple seconds right now, go hit those subscribe buttons. And once you're ready, come right back here and we're gonna jump into classroom and I'm gonna show you how I assign this to my students. Okay, so here we are in Google Classroom, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to assign the physical activity journal as an assignment for my students. So to do this, I'm gonna jump over to Classwork, and then I'll hit Create. I'll go New Assignment, and then I'll give this a title. So I'll call this Physical Activity Journal. Um, for the instructions, you can type in your own instructions, but if you grab the physical activity journal, uh, I actually left the instructions that I gave my students back in the spring right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste that there. And now I'm ready to assign the activity. So instead of going create, which is normally how I would go about this, today I'm going to go add because I already created the physical activity journal template in Google Drive. So I'm going to click add. I'll go Google Drive. And then I'll see here my recents. So I'll add that. And what's really important here is that when I create this, I don't just leave it as students can view file. I make a copy for each student. That's going to be so important that I do this for my students so that they each get their own copy and they're not just all editing this one <laughs> template grid that I created, which is going to lead to like a ton of headache and tears and me curling up in the fetal position on the ground and just, you know, miserable distance learning experiences. Now, while I'm here adding things, I'm going to add a few support documents that can help my students in their learning. These are things that I've pulled from my Smart Goals Fitness Unit um, that are part of that download, but then I'm going to add here so that the students can refer to them as they go about their learning. So I'm going to go add, I'll go file, and then hit browse. And the two documents I want to add are my learning roadmap as well as the fit principle poster. Um, I want to add the learning roadmap so the students can kind of see what successful learning would look like in this unit. And I'm adding the fit principle as well so that they can refer to it because it's been a while since we'd ran this unit back in earlier in the year. And I want them to make sure that when they're scheduling their, their fit moves points, that they're doing so in a way that is really aligned to their SMART goal. So all this here is added. And now what's left is I'm going to go over here and just fill in this information. So for me, I did this ungraded. And for the due date, I'm not going to set a due date here, but you could probably set it for, let's say if you're doing this for two weeks, you could set it for the last day of those two weeks. For the topic, I am going to create a topic, uh, which is going to be um, the name of my, my unit. So I'm going to call it my fit, Smart Goals Fitness Unit. And for a rubric, I'm not using rubric here. Um, so everything's ready to go. All right. So I'm actually not going to assign this right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule it. So I'm going to hit schedule and then I'm going to schedule it for... Uh, yeah, let's schedule for tomorrow at 8 a.m. So I'm just going to schedule that. So at that time, it will appear in my student stream 
and they will get a notification and they'll be able to start filling it in as classwork. All right, so now that the assignment has been assigned, I'm gonna show you how I gave my students ongoing feedback throughout their physical activity logs. Now, just so you know, I'm using a bit of a classroom hack here. Uh, I'm not gonna use the traditional students turning in and then me returning the work um, because it doesn't really work for this activity. Like I said, this is like a, a living document that's gonna continue to grow over time that I wanna use to be able to maintain those relationships with my students. So let's jump back over to classroom and I'll show you exactly how I did this. So let's look at how I gave my students feedback in an ongoing kind of way. Because like I said at the top, the whole point of this was for me to be able to maintain relationships with my students over time. I didn't want it to be that I assigned the activity and then I didn't hear from anyone from two weeks and then they turned it in. Instead, I wanted to be able to go in in real time, watch their entries, give them feedback, give them some encouragement, check out their brag boards, and just feel like I was there with them being a part of it because that was something that was so lacking in the spring when we were all distance learning and we we're all locked down in our homes. So just like I said before, um, this is a little bit like non-traditional. I didn't go in, have students turn things in and then return to them. Instead, I went about it in a different way. And to do that, we have to understand how Google Classroom um, maintains and kind of manages all the files and all the folders that you create within. So first of all, when you create a class a classroom, Google Drive automatically creates a folder for that classroom in the back end. You can find that when you go to classwork and if you click on class drive folder, uh, you'll see all the different things that you've shared in that classroom. From things that you've shared in the stream, in your post, let's say, to a folder for each activity or each assignment that created. So within that is where you're going to see all the copies that were created for your students when you assigned the activity. Remember when we selected make a copy for each student? This is where all those copies exist. So I can go into any of these, click on it, open it up, and then check out what the student has been doing. So for example, this is just an example one that I made, um, but you know, like this student here started filling it in. And then when I could say, okay, so here I see daily stretches. If I wanna leave some feedback, what I'll do is I'll secondary click. And then from there, I'll go comment. And I'll, I can ask, um, oh, what kind of stretches did you do? And when I leave that comment, the student will receive an email notification that I've left a comment and then we can have a threaded discussion. They can give me feedback, they can reflect on it. I can ask more uh, uh, clarifying questions and just push them deeper and deeper into their understanding of how their physical activity levels on a daily basis is having an impact not only on their well-being, but is helping them make progress towards their SMART goal. And this is true too for their brag board. So here I have some photos in here and I can leave a comment again, just right clicking on it going comment and say, this is amazing. Where were you? And again, all of this, the whole purpose of it is to build and maintain relationships with my students that I can't do in my regular way, which would be talking them to the halls, uh, sitting down with them at lunch or hanging out with them at recess. Now, one thing you may be thinking is that you're not going to go into this folder here with all your students and then open up each individual um, file to see if any changes have been made. That would be like insanely time consuming and nobody has time for that. So instead, I'm going to show you a trick that I came up with in the spring that made it way easier for me to quickly see who had been updating their files so that I could go in right away and just give as much feedback and, and leave any comments that I may like. So I'm gonna do this using the inspector tab, which is the little eye in the circle here. So when I click on this, it's gonna open up the details of the file. And this here isn't really interesting. There's nothing really going on here. And you see here where the details is underlined in blue. I'm gonna go over here and click on activity. And what this tab does is that it shows me all the most recent activity that has taken place in any of the files in this folder. So this is how I was able to see who was updating their files so that right away, if I saw an update going on, I could just click on that file, see which update happened, and then leave in some feedback like I was just showing you before. So I think that this here just saved me a ton of time. It allowed me to react quickly to students who were making progress in their physical activity logs. And it just allowed them me to let them know that I care about them and that I want to be there with them and that I was just reacting as quickly as possible to what they're doing. So again, that was just here in the inspector. You just click on inspector, you make sure that you've selected activity, not details, and you can see all of the most recent activity. When you click on a file, it will actually jump you right to the most recent change that happened. So it makes it really simple for you to go in and just leave 
um, any feedback. So that was my little pro tip there for being able to uh, stay up to date with the feedback, stay up to date with the comments, push my students deeper into their learning and their understanding. And again, just build and maintain those relationships with them throughout our little distance learning adventures in the spring. All right. So that's how I make physical activity journals for my students in both Google Drive and Google Classroom. I hope that this video has served you well. I hope that you gained something out of it. And most importantly, I hope that you hit those learning targets that we set out at the start of the video. Be sure to check out the description below for a link to the show notes. There I'm going to put all kinds of additional information. I'll make sure there's tons of links and there's all kinds of things that are going to help you bring this to your teaching or at least use this to inspire you to create amazing new assignments for your students in your virtual PE or distance teaching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all those smashes of the like button as well. Okay, those go a long way in terms of helping other people discover this content that I'm putting together for you. Okay, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter. I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. Please continue to take good care of yourselves and happy teaching.